Cuphead is a very good game. I know, something you've never heard before. With its fun rubber hose style, simple yet tricky bosses, and memorable characters, it's easy to see why so many would be inspired by it. So for this installment of Games on Scratch, I'll be looking at remakes and reimaginings of Cuphead. The thing I'm most interested in is seeing how these games go about recreating both the charm of the art style as well as the intricacies in the boss fights. But either way, this'll surely be interesting at least. Our first game is just called Cuphead. So first things first, we have a title screen, which is actually a surprise compared to a lot of other Scratch games, which prefer to just toss you in. Then it's time to fight this guy. Mr. Sleep Paralysis has three attacks. Laser Blast, Bubble Shot, and Poo Poo Spray. The boss has 100 health, and every shot you hit only does one damage. Speaking of these shots, you shoot at a downward angle, so you can only hit the boss when you're at close range. And you can only fire shots if you're moving. As for the difficulty, while Cuphead gets stuck on the boss from time to time, the actual hardest thing about this fight is staying awake because man this is boring. The boss doesn't have any attack patterns. It just cycles through the same three attacks over and over again, two of which you can avoid by just running away. Overall, a fine start, but I'm hoping things can get a little better from here. Next is Cuphead the Root Pack boss fight. Wait, old? Oh man, I gotta play the newest one. The newest one. So as the title suggests, this is a remake of Botanic Panic, the Root Pack boss fight from the original game. Playing it on Scratch itself, there seems to be a texturing error, as there's a giant question mark in the middle of the screen. Thankfully, there's a link to a better instance without this bug. And yup, it's the root pack. You get access to any shot type and special in the game. And this game has every aspect of the graphics on point. Even things as minimal as the background being animated and having a parallax effect. Every form of movement is here too. Honestly, I'm surprised at just how accurate this is. The only thing missing here is the old timey overlay that the original game has, to really build up the immersion that it's a 1930s animation. So overall, yeah, it's pretty good. Next we got Cuphead and Mugman. Yup, that's them. So here's Cuphead But It's Me by Awesome Al 82 so at first glance, this appears to be a modified version of the level Ruse of Anus from Cuphead. But instead of Goopy, you're fighting against Ditto. Also, Awesome Al is naked, so let's give him some clothes real quick. You can only move, jump, and shoot, with some of the more advanced movement not being available, like dashing, parrying, or even being able to angle your shots. Meanwhile, Ditto sends out little blobs that head in your direction. The art and animation here is pretty well done especially considering that it doesn't take any assets from the original Cuphead. And the changes to the fight are also super cool to see. Like this second phase, where Ditto jumps in the air, hits the ground, and shoots out two big blobs. Overall, I'd say it's pretty good. Guys, I can't believe it. Cuphead 2 is finally here, and it isn't made by Studio MDHR either. Let's see what our boys at Nubson Games are giving us with this new release. So right away, we got a killer title screen that just fills me with excitement for what's to come. Then we're hit with a boss selection screen that reminds me of Mega Man. Then we get to fight a boss of our choice. And... oh. So it seems that we've been turned into a marketable plushie. No! No! The movement here is surprisingly fluid, especially with the way the PNG graphics look. Although there is an issue with the bosses. They, um... uh... They're all the same. While they look different, they all just shoot a projectile, and then they, um, they do it again. Then there's also a glitch where the bosses just don't die. They're supposed to have 100 health. I've been here for years. So after a reset, and the bosses lost their magic immortality, I was able to beat up all of them. Now I've unlocked Super Cuphead. Then the final battle became available. Now this fight is way harder than the other ones, because this time, the projectiles shoot forward. Then we make it to the final phase, where Super Cuphead is flying in the air and we can't move, and he won't die. Overall, I'd say Cuphead 2 is a pretty disappointing sequel. Very sad. But maybe it was actually an improvement. We should go back to the first game. Another game that's just called Cuphead. 
So this is another take on the Goopy boss fight. There isn't any card meter, so the game just tells you when the ability is available. Except the text also shows up when the ability isn't available. At least you get to switch your shot type to chasers here, which are even crazier than they are in actual Cuphead. The pixel art here is a neat design choice. While the actual Cuphead uses that iconic rubber hose style, it's neat to see a reimagining using a pixel art aesthetic a style you'd see in old video games. The fight itself is just the fight with Goopy, but without the last phase. But when you beat the second phase, you get to hear PewDiePie Congratulations instrumental in the background. This one's called Cuphead Brothers Game. There's a killer on board and it's got me feeling anxious. Who made it in the vent? I guess they must be doing maintenance. What? So, um... There's a lot to get into here. So first things first, the background music is from a Nerd Out Among Us rap. Then the fight itself was taken from a DA Games music video called Brothers in Arms. So I guess that explains the title. So why is the background music Among Us? I don't know. I will say it's pretty cool that they were able to change this music video into a functional boss fight, with plenty of moving parts. But they were all just taken from the music video. I think the biggest change, and by extension, the worst part of the game, is that Cuphead just jumps straight up and farther than he should. This is a pretty big issue here, as the level was designed for regular Cuphead. So when someone copies the level and gives it to weird high jump Cuphead, then it throws the whole thing out of whack. Overall, this game's, uh... Here's Cuphead Butt Scratch. This is probably the biggest project in this whole video. Someone actually reimagined Cuphead with its own overworld and shop and shot types into Scratch form. You play as the iconic Scratch Cat, and you need to go and beat up bosses. They even remade the pre-battle starting screens. As for the fights themselves, while it's neat to see them remade, there's a pretty big flaw with how the movement works. Jumping is slow, and it makes avoiding things difficult. Then when you jump while shooting, the bullets go in a full circle instead of continuing to shoot forward. Meaning that as long as you're jumping, progression in the boss fights is impossible. But the Rupak isn't the only boss here. We also have Goopy, Cagney Carnation, and Hildeberg. There's also an igloo that doesn't do anything. Why is this here? The way these bosses were remade in the simple scratch visual style is also interesting to see here. Overall, I recommend this one. It's similar enough to Cuphead to where I can definitely recognize the similarities, yet it's different enough to say that it's not just a copy of the original game. Next, we have one called Cuphead Calamaria Boss Fight. So this is a remake of the... Cuphead Calamaria boss fight. Instead of randomly using an attack, this game's designed for the boss to use their attacks in order. But I noticed a pretty glaring flaw here. The boss itself doesn't have a hitbox. While you can get hit by Calamaria's attacks, you can just fly into her and you're perfectly fine. Especially since none of her attacks go that far back, since you're not intended to go to that section of the stage. Something else I want to point out is that all three phases of the fight were remade. While not every attack was, I still respect the effort. Here's just a slew of different Psy Carrot boss fights. I have no idea who made the first one since they aren't classified as remixes. But hey, if it was copied so many times, then the game has to be some level of good. So the boss fight here is taken from the final phase of the Root Pack fight, where you have to fight against this giant psychic carrot. That's why it's called Psy Carrot. And yeah, this remake looks kinda goofy. The model for Cuphead here doesn't fit with the same style as the boss. Some versions of this fight have more regular forms of shooting, while others have shots that follow the mouse. Some even have Mugman. This one gives you a ton of health. This one adds a Yeti and a Bat. I don't really understand why this particular game is the one used for so many remixes. Maybe it's due to the game's simplicity where variables can easily be changed and images can easily be added. Either way, I'd say it's fine, I suppose, but definitely one of the weaker games here. Ending things off, we have Cuphead vs. AP Shooter. This is actually a reference to a small, relatively unknown tower defense game called... 
Uh, BTD Battles. So this one is pretty weird. We play as a still image of Cuphead and he shoots red gems at Pea Shooter PVZ. We seem to be at a public park and Pea Shooter is just shooting peas and shooting more peas. Overall, this one's a bit weird. Like, come on, the text isn't even centered. So yeah, that's just a small selection of the Cuphead games you could find on Scratch. Until next time, don't text me after 8.45 p.m. as that is my bedtime. Bye.